Welcome back to the 2014 Glendale Fire Department Radio Communication Plan update. Uh, again, I'm Thomas Marchant, Battalion Chief on the A Platoon, and uh, this is part two of our update. Picking up where we left off at the back of the command vehicle, let's review our incident communication plan. On the left side, we monitor TAC on our mobile radio. We have portables set up to monitor our RIC channel. We favor red nine for that. And then red 10, along with 14, 15, and 16 being monitored with a single portable per channel. And then command is on the mobile where the incident commander on the right side of the situation status and resource status board will be located. So moving forward and getting into our rapid intervention communications plan, let's first ask the question, given the incident comm plan and all those frequencies that are being monitored and assigned to the incident, what frequencies should the rapid intervention company be monitoring when they're in standby mode? Red 9 or the RIC channel. 16, which is XLC access, the emergency trigger channel. 14, reverse access if for some reason the firefighter hitting the emergency trigger cannot access the 16 repeater. Followed by Command, which in this scenario was red three, and TAC. Again, in our scenario, this was red two. So the next question is, how many radios should be carried by any one individual in order to monitor these five channels? And when we ask this question of the group, we get varied answers from one to five one per channel. Practically, no individual should be asked to practically monitor more than two devices. So our answer is two. No more than two radios should be monitored by one individual at any one time. Up to five frequencies, two radios. So knowing the five frequencies that we want to monitor as a rapid intervention company and knowing that we're going to split this over two devices, it's uh, important that we recognize the two halves, the two sides, if you will, of our new Apex 7000. All right. When we ask this question of the group, we get varied responses. Okay. So we're going to work through our most common responses. The difference being, is it UHF versus VHF? Some of the responses we get is, well, it's repeat versus direct. And then some of us believe it's trunked radio system versus a conventional radio system. So to clarify this in our 2014 update, we're going to make it this simple. Repeat and direct have nothing to do with which side of the radio you're on. Both sides of this radio have both repeat and direct channels. UHF and VHF is a little misleading and it's not the best way to describe the two sides of the radio. Okay, You'll find UHF and VHF on one side with UHF on the other. Okay, So our answer is trunked versus conventional. A good way to perhaps think about this is in building construction, we have the conventional style of construction compared to the lightweight or the newer style of construction. So if you will, take the trunked radio system and consider it the newer style of radio systems, perhaps that will help you divide uh, the radio in its two halves. Question for the group, can we scan both sides of the radio? And the common answer is we all recognize that you cannot scan both sides of this radio. Okay. 
So let me give you a, a scenario, a very common scenario in the north, the uh, Valley Battalion Zone, the north end of town. Uh, Engine 29 is running with Los Angeles County Fire Department into the LA County jurisdiction on a structure fire. And they've been assigned Blue 6 and V9 Direct. Question to the group, can those two channels be scanned at the same time using the Apex 7000? And we get varied answers, depending on who you ask. But the real question is, which side of the radio are those two channels on? If they're on opposite sides, then the answer is no. If they're on the same side, the answer is yes. Ask yourself who owns the channels. Blue 6 and V9 Direct are both owned by the Los Angeles County Fire Department. The Los Angeles County Fire Department uses a conventional or an older style radio system. It's what works for LA County. So the fact that these are both on the conventional side of the radio means the answer is yes. Now, next question, is Blue 6 UHF or VHF? Blue 6 is UHF and it's conventional. So it goes on the conventional side. It lives on the conventional side of the Apex 7000. V9 Direct, is that UHF or is that VHF? And the answer is it's VHF. And we know that it lives on the conventional side of the radio. So the answer is yes. You can scan these two channels at the same time. How about red eight? Is red eight a conventional or a trunked channel? Go back to the original question, who owns red eight? Area C, Verdugo Fire uses red eight on the Latuna Tickpea, for example, as the admin channel. So is that trunked or is that conventional? And the answer is trunked. Next question, is it UHF or VHF? And the answer is, it's UHF. So you see how you can't divide the radio by UHF and VHF, repeat and direct. The radio is divided into a trunked system and a conventional system. On the conventional side, you'll find VHF and UHF channels. On the trunked side, you'll find our UHF channels. If I asked you, will the radio scan all three of these channels at the same time? Because red eight is on the trunked side and blue six and V9 direct are conventional, the answer is no. So let's continue and let's get to the bottom of what we are going to go moving forward in 2014 with our rapid intervention communication plan. We've already discussed the fact that we're not going to ask anyone to monitor more than two radios, all right, at any one time, in or out of the ideal age. So given the two radios, you're going to respond to the incident with radio one and in our scenario you're going to have it on the trunk side which we normally respond in you're going to monitor command which in our scenario was red three and test which in our scenario was red two and that'll be your trunked radio. When you report to the command post, you're going to accept that second radio and you're going to put it on the conventional side. And you recall the other three channels 
that we agreed needed to be monitored during a rapid intervention assignment. The first channel was the RIP channel, which in our scenario was nine, followed by 16 as your secondary priority, and 14, reverse access, which will back up 16 if 16 cannot find the repeater, if the radio cannot find channel 16's repeater. And so here's your comp plan. Now the last piece to this is how quickly, when assigned rapid intervention, can you get both radios on the rapid intervention comp plan, one trunked, one on the conventional side? How quickly can you adjust or customize your scan list? And this is a perishable skill. This is something that we need to practice on a daily basis. Um, but one way of doing that very quickly is going to be is going to be to come up with our organization's default scan list. And by default scan list, I'm referring to how we would keep our radios in a run ready position. Compare this run ready position to checking your breathing apparatus every morning and knowing exactly how much air you want in that bottle and where you want to adjust those straps. Consider the chainsaw and its run-ready position. The Homatro rescue tool. The, uh, the blowers that we carry on our truck companies. They all have a run-ready position. Well now, the Apex 7000 in the Glendale Fire Department has a run-ready position too. The run-ready position for the Apex 7000 on the trunked scan list will have red two through eight being scanned. On the conventional side, it'll have 9, 10, 14, and 16 as the secondary priority, as the default scan list or the run ready position. So the understanding is that when you come to work in the morning and check your equipment, you will make sure that it's run ready. When you use your equipment on an incident, if you were to adjust any of these settings, you will then after the incident return it to its run ready position. This is the condition it would be expected to be in when you come to work and relieve your counterpart and vice versa when your counterpart relieves you. If, if you do this, I'd like to show you how quickly you can arrive on our rapid intervention compound. Taking your trunk radio, the one that you respond with. Access. And rotating it to the command channel. And making sure that scan is on. Your trunk radio is monitoring the RIC COM plan. If you take your second radio, the one that uh, you received from the Red one. IC, move it to your RIC Red. channel. Red 9D. Make sure that it's scanning. And your conventional radio is now monitoring the RIC plan. So long as we have this as our default scan list, you can be ready to operate as RIC with two devices, two radios, monitoring both the trunked side and the conventional side, ready for a rapid intervention deployment. These are perishable skills. Please practice these regularly. Thank you.